You will hear a woman calling an animal park to inquire about a job. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Pinder's Animal Park. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm ringing to ask whether you have any jobs available. Ah, what sort of work are you looking for? Is that permanent or part time or? Actually, I'm just looking for temporary work. I'm a student. Oh right.、Uh, I'll just get a form and ask you a few questions. Then I'll pass your application onto our recruitment section. Is that okay? Fine, thank you. So, starting with your name. It's Jane Lamerton. Is that L A double M E R T O N? There's only one M in it. Oh right. And your address? It's forty-two West Lane. Right. And is that in Exeter? Yes. Okay. And can you give me your mobile phone number? O seven seven nine two four three O nine two one. Right. Now the next thing is, when are you available to start work? I finish college on the eighth of June. That's in three weeks' time, but I can't start work till the eleventh because I've got a hospital appointment on the tenth of June. Ah, no problem. Now I need to ask you a few questions about the type of job that might be suitable. Do you have any particular kind of work in mind? It doesn't necessarily mean that you will get work in the field that you want, but I can record your preferences. Well, I'd do anything, and I have worked as an assistant animal keeper before when I was still at school. But I'm studying at a catering college now, and I'd really like to get some experience as an assistant cook, if possible. Right. So that's your first choice. Have you done that kind of job before? No, but I've helped my aunt sometimes. She runs a cafe in Exeter. Hmm. Would you say you've got any relevant skills then? Well, I'm used to using the kind of equipment you usually find in a kitchen. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Okay, and I know you're still studying, but do you already have any qualifications related to that kind of work? A hygiene qualification, for example? I haven't, no, but I've got a certificate in food handling. I did it before I decided to become a full-time student. Fine. Okay. That means you wouldn't need any specific training if you did get the kind of work you wanted, but you'd have to do a short course on first aid. All our new employees do that. It just takes half a day, and most people find it generally useful. Oh yes, I'm sure it is. Well,、uh, that's about it, really. Oh,、uh, just one last thing. Can you give me the name of someone who would give you a reference, like a previous employer or? Oh yes, you can put Dr. Ruth Price. Okay, is that one of your college lecturers? She's my college tutor. She's known me for over two years, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind. In fact, she's given me a reference before. Fine. We'd probably contact her by phone. Do you happen to know her number? I've got it on my phone. Yes, it's o two o eight. 
685-114. That's a landline. Good. Well, as I say, I can't promise anything, but I'll pass your application on and you should hear in a few days. Is there anything else? Just one thing. I suffer from a particular type of colour blindness and sometimes employers have to make special arrangements for that. OK, I'll make a note of that. It won't be a good that you've made us aware of it. You can provide us with more details if you're offered a job. OK, thanks very much. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear two engineering students, a woman in her sixth year called Linda and a man in his fifth year called Matthew, discussing the benefits of student work placements. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Hi, Linda. Can you spare a few minutes? Hello, Matthew. No problem. I just wanted to talk to you about temporary work placements. I've never really thought there was a good reason for doing one. I've got some savings, so I don't really need the money at the moment. But I've had an email from the university about a vacancy that looks quite interesting. You did a placement last year, didn't you? I did, yes. In my case, I wanted to find out if I was making the right career choice before I began applying for permanent jobs. I thought I wanted to work in car manufacturing, but I wasn't sure, so I applied to Toyota. What was the application process like? Lengthy. There were a lot of different parts to it. The dullest one was a psychometric test. You know, when you have to answer loads of questions about yourself. And you're trying to guess what's the best thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then there was an activity that we did in groups, which I found really fascinating. Engineers are renowned for being a bit unsociable, but I thought we made a great team. And we had an individual task, too. We had to sort through various business documents and prioritize them. It was just like what you have to do as a student, really, just with different content. What exactly were you doing on the placement? I was helping to design some diagnostic software to identify any waste in the car assembly process. Do you mean waste of materials? No, time. Anything that can speed the process up helps to cut costs. How did the work placement compare to being a student? Was it hard work? Yes, it was. I'd had full-time work before. I've done various unskilled jobs during university holidays, and some of those involve long hours. So I thought I'd find it easy. I was wrong, though. I think when you're on placement, you're always trying to prove yourself. So you push yourself hard to succeed? Yes. But I got a lot of support from my employers. They were always helpful. And then, at the end of the placement, I was given formal feedback. Do you mean on your engineering ability? Well, no. I didn't really need that because we had team meetings every other day. And so I had the chance to discuss technical issues and ask about anything that wasn't clear. The evaluation was about general workplace things, like organizational ability, initiative, that sort of thing. I get the impression you think you benefited from the placement. Well, the best thing is that they've offered me a job for next year. Depending on my exam results, of course, but still... A permanent one? Yes. 
But apart from that, I learned so much. The industrial environment was much more demanding than the academic one, so my general skills improved, like time management, meeting deadlines. And on the technical side, I learned new software packages, like MS Project. Well, I think you've convinced me that work placements are worthwhile, but while you're here, can you give me advice on something else? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. I'm about to make a start on the engineering materials module and I've got a book list here. Can you have a quick look and tell me what you would recommend? That's if you can remember. Let's see. I do remember some of them. Hmm. Yes, this one. The Science of Materials. I found the subject quite hard generally. But this book is very accessible, so it suited me. It doesn't cover everything, though. What about this one, then? Materials Engineering? Oh, yes. I do remember that. But it's a bit out of date now, isn't it? Unless it's a new edition. I don't think so. But what I liked about it were the pictures. They really helped to understand the descriptions. It's useful just from that point of view. Let's see. What else? Oh, yes. That one there, Engineering Basics. I think out of all these, that's got the widest coverage. But I've looked at the contents page and it hardly mentions nanotechnology. Yes, you're right. The evolution of materials does, though. It's a recent publication, so it covers all the latest developments. It's a bit thin on the 1960s, though, and that decade was quite important. Well, it sounds as if they all complement each other in some ways. I don't suppose you can lend me... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between Wolfgang and his new friend Mary, who has already been at the college for a few months. In the first part of the conversation, they're talking about a social activity program at college. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, Wolfgang. Ah, oh, Mary, how are you? Oh, fine. How's it going? Have you just had a class? Yes, I just finished my listening class. It was a little bit difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's always difficult when you first arrive somewhere. I found it quite hard when I first arrived. Mm. But you know what really made a difference? Was going on these social activities that the, the college arranges for you. It kind of gives you a chance to practice your English and... Mm. I've heard that the college is pretty good about organising those kinds of things. How do, how do I find out about it? Well, 
I've just picked up a schedule today. Let's let's have a look at it. Here it is. What is it? A schedule for for this week or? Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. Okay, yeah. Maybe we can do some things together. In fact. Yeah, that would be great. So. Let's see. What are they doing tonight? Monday night. Well, they've. So. Oh, they've got singing with guitar. So I went to this last week. It's. Oh really? Yes, it's quite good fun. Is it pretty good? Yeah, yeah. What do they do? Do they have a concert or? It's. They teach you、um, modern and traditional songs. Hmm. Well, I'm not much of a singer, but.、Uh... Oh come on! You should go. It's really good fun. Well, I suppose it'd be a good way to practice my English. Yeah, 'cause you learn kind of British folk songs and things. It's. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, but look at that! That starts at eight, but I notice at nine o'clock there's a, a a late night coach to Cambridge for a film. I think I'd want to try go to try that. Uh, what time does this singing thing finish? Do you know? Oh well, usually it it kind of lasts about two hours, but I mean we can always leave earlier. They don't mind, do? Oh, okay. So we can do both then. Yeah. So, right. So that's at nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah. What movie is it? Let me see. Oh, oh, it's Rocky. Have you seen it? Rocky, Rocky. Oh, that's that's、uh, the one with Richard Dreyfus, isn't it? Richard Dreyfus? No, it's、uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh yes, I remember now. American movie. Yes, I haven't seen that. I want to see that. Good. Let's go to that. All right. Oh. Okay. Oh, did you see on Tuesday that there's a tennis tournament? Tennis. Hmm. What time is that? Well, that's at four o'clock in the afternoon. Where is it? Is it on campus or? No, no. It's at w- Wembley. So that's in London. Oh, oh. So that it's pretty far away then. What time will it be coming back? Um. So it. The coach gets back at midnight. Oh, midnight. Well. Hmm. Tell you what. I think maybe I'd better cancel on that because I've got a class Wednesday morning, and I'm afraid at about eight thirty. I'm afraid if I came back that late, I probably would.、Uh, I'd be very tired in class, and actually, I I'm more into football myself anyway. Oh, football! Well, did you see there's a football match on Wednesday? Oh yeah. Well, who's who's playing? Let's see. Oh, it's England and Brazil. Oh, I really want to see that. Would you like to go together? Yeah, sure. What time is it? Let me see. It says fifteen thirty, so that would be three thirty. Three thirty, huh? Now I've got a, I have a lecture、uh, right after lunch on Wednesday at one thirty. Uh huh. What lecture's that? Oh well, there's a journalist coming from the BBC. He's going to talk about his experiences as a foreign correspondent. Ah,、oh, that sounds interesting. Would you Would you like to go? Yeah. What time do you say it was? Uh, right after lunch, around one thirty. Oh, one thirty. I have a class then. What a sh. Oh yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Well, what time does your class finish? Finishes. It's an hour long, so it finishes at two thirty. Oh well, I shouldn't imagine. The lecture shouldn't go much later than that either. So after your class and after my lecture, we can get together to go to the football game. Okay. So we can meet. Let's see, maybe three o'clock, or or maybe three fifteen. Yeah, I think three fifteen would be all right. Okay, where should we meet? Well, usually these on these kind of trips, the coach leaves from in front of the dining hall, so maybe we could meet there. Okay, so in front of the dining hall at three fifteen, that sounds fine. Yeah, right. On Thursday, there's an international evening in school hall. Yeah, all songs and dances performance by students from all over the world. That's very interesting. Would you like to go and see? Yes. When is it? It will start at eight. Shall we meet at seven fifty in front of the school hall? Fine. Seven fifty in front of the school hall. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty.
Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Oh, and another thing I definitely want to do this weekend uh, is to go and see... Uh, they're going to have a trip to Stratford on Avon. I think it's on... Let me see. What day is that? Friday, I think my roommate told me. Oh, Friday. Would you like to go to that? Yeah, but are you sure it's Friday? I thought that's what he said, but I'm, I might have been mistaken. Well, usually these things are on weekends. Right. Let's see here. Oh, you're right, yeah, Saturday morning, 8.30. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, Friday's the disco. Oh, disco. Yeah. So, actually, I've arranged to go with some of my friends. So, if you'd like to come along with us... Oh, that would be very nice, yeah. Yeah, you can meet some more students. Oh, well, what time... What time shall we go to that, then? Well, it starts at... What time? 8.30, but we don't want to go too early. So, let's say 9 or 9.30. Let's say 9.30. OK, yeah. We can meet there, um, but we'd better not stay too late because the Stratford thing is, uh, pretty early in the morning. The bus will be leaving at 8.30. Oh, yeah, right. So we want to make sure we get up for that. Yeah. Say, by the way, this trip, um, since it's, uh, quite a f way away, do we have to pay anything extra for that or is it free? Hmm. Well, usually most of the trips are free, but... Yeah, for these ones, which are quite a distance away, then we usually have to pay a, a little bit extra. Is it a lot, or...? No, it's usually about £25, something like that. Oh, well, do we have to tell them ahead of time that we're going to go? Yeah, usually you have to sign up a couple of days in advance, so... Oh, where, where do we do that? Um, well, you do that at the student services office. So you have to go and see one of the social activities officers. Oh, so I just tell them that I want to go and to pay my money and then sign my name. Well, I think I'll go ahead and do that today. Actually, I've got some free time right now. Do you know where I go to do that? Um, yeah, yeah. It's the, the student services office. It's just across the road from here. Oh, OK. Um, well, across the kind of... You mean the green building over there? Yeah, yeah. So it's on the second floor. Oh, OK. Well, tell you what, um, are you going to the Shakespeare thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Would you like me to go ahead and sign you up as well? Oh, yes, yeah, that'd be great. But, well, I haven't got any money on me at the moment. Oh, don't worry about the money, that's fine. You can pay me back this evening. I'll go and sign us now. And then when I meet you tonight at the singing, you can, er, uh, give me the money then. Oh, well, if, if you are sure, that would be great. No, it's no problem. OK. Oh, is that the time? I'd better go. I've got a class. I'll be late. OK, sorry. I'll see you later then. All right. See you tonight. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You're going to listen to a talk about tea in the UK. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. During the 1930s, there was a popular song which had the title Everything Stops for Tea. And to millions of British people, a restful cuppa is still an ideal way to relax for a few minutes from the rigours of the day. The English custom of drinking tea has its roots in the 17th and 18th centuries. When first imported to Britain, the exotic cha, cha or cha, as the Chinese tea was variously called, was considered a man's drink to be enjoyed with colleagues at London coffee shops. These were popular meeting places for many walks of life, politicians, lawyers, poets, actors and writers. Many London clubs began in this manner, and the famous Lloyd's Insurance underwriters started out as Lloyd's Coffee House. In 1706, the first coffee house that offered tea was Tom's Coffee House, owned by Thomas Twining. He realised that he needed to introduce an added attraction to compete with the many other coffee houses in London, and tea was rare, exotic and extremely expensive. With these credentials, tea became an exclusive drink and enabled Twining to open a tea shop under the sign of the Golden Lion in the Strand. By the 18th century, the ladies of the more affluent classes were going China mad, using tea as an excuse for displaying their extravagant purchases of Chinese porcelain and Dresden tea sets. A comprehensive tea tray would consist of a teapot and stand, teacups and saucers, sugar bowl, milk jug and basin for discarded tea and tea leaves. Tea was still expensive and kept in locked tea caddies. Skilled craftsmen fashioned caddies of carved inlaid woods fitted with crystal and precious metals. To ensure the servants weren't tempted by this priceless commodity, the caddy was kept locked and only the mistress of the house held the key and prepared tea when guests came to visit. No well-brought-up young Englishwoman could consider herself socially acceptable unless she knew how to brew a proper cup of tea. As the 18th century progressed, changes in commerce and working hours resulted in the main meal of the day being taken much later in the evening. The prospect of lasting from breakfast until evening did not appeal to the Duchess of Bedford, who is usually credited with being the first to alleviate late afternoon hunger pangs by introducing a small four o'clock meal served with tea. With time, the light, wafer-thin toast or delicate white bread gave way to exotic fillings like tomato and egg, cucumber, chicken or potted shrimps, followed by buttered scones, crumpets or elegant pastries. The popularity of tea continued to spread, but it was not until 1839 that the first shipment of Assam tea, Indian tea was landed in Britain. A healthy trade with India was soon established, and tea clippers, like the Cutty Sark, now a museum in a dry dock at Greenwich, were reaching the peak of their sailing days. In 1879, the first limited shipments of Ceylon tea began to arrive, and by 1880, this had been firmly established alongside Indian and China teas, giving the broad range of teas that are available today. There have been few changes in three centuries of tea trading. London is still the centre, and indeed Twining still has a shop on the site of the original Tom's Coffee House at 216 The Strand. The name Twining has been linked with tea for over 280 years. Indeed, it was Richard Twining, in his capacity as chairman of the dealers of tea, who in 1784 persuaded Prime Minister William Pitt to reduce the high tax on tea, making the beverage more accessible to the general public. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.